the Trump administration, the Trump regime, all right, let's use their vocabulary. The Trump regime is on its way out. Today is its final day. It is the 19th. Uh, Joe Biden is about to be inaugurated. And the Trump regime is on its way out. What has Mike Pompeo done? Oh, same old. He goes and slaps some sanctions on poor defenseless people. So the way that they're doing this set of sanctions at the last minute, at the 11th hour, uh, they've designated uh, the um, Houthi rebels in Yemen as uh, a terrorist organization. And they've also put Cuba back on the list of uh, uh, sponsors of, of, of terrorism, right? So I'm just going to read this to you briefly over here. This is from the devil himself, from Pompeo. Uh, this is the official statement on, on the U.S. Uh, Department of State website. So these sanctions, by the way, they were announced January 10th, but they come into effect today on the 19th because it's the last uh, full day of the Trump administration. So he's, he's notifying uh, Congress of his intent to designate Ansar Allah. So this is uh, also referred to as the Houthis, more commonly in the Western media, as a foreign terrorist organization or an FTO. Okay. And also as a specially designated global terrorist entity. Okay. And he's put the three, uh, three of its leaders under sanctions. So uh, this is Al-Houthi and um, Al-Hakim, both, both of them. So uh, the thing is, the way this works, uh, because if you scroll down over here, you'll see this also in the Caesar Act sanctions, right, Wh which have devastated Syria. You'll see here that the United States recognizes concerns that these designations will have an impact on the humanitarian situation in Yemen. We are planning to put in place measures to reduce their impact on certain humanitarian activity and imports into Yemen. This, this is nonsense. It's, it's a complete lie. Um, they said the same thing about Syria, about the Caesar Act sanctions, which came into effect in June of... Uh, June 14th, was it? Of last year? Look how that's going. Completely crushed the economy. Uh, the lira, the Syrian pound. I mean, the inflation is, is just... It's hyperinflated beyond belief. People are forming bread lines. And, and, and Syria is, uh, I mean, e even despite the war, you could say it was still in a better position than Yemen. And look how that's going. Yemen, I mean, Jesus Christ. I don't know if, I've, if I can even show you. I wanted to because I, I think that it's important to, to show how the people are suffering. But, you know, there's YouTube censorship again. I can't do it with Black Lives Matter uh, police brutality. So I'm not sure if I can even show you here. I can't, you know, great. <laughs> you, go look it up. Go look up on Google uh, pictures of... Again, a content warning, right? It's very horrendous and horrific. You see people in Yemen starving, like, to the bone. I mean, I mean the, the, the humanitarian crisis there is unbelievable. You have a million-plus people who have cholera, biggest outbreak in history. Think about that. Completely preventable. There's no reason, no need for this to happen. And the famine that, that is ongoing there, and, and they come and do this. They come and, and slap... Uh, Yemen with sanctions, and by, des by designating them as a, uh, the Houthis as a terrorist organization. Now, I just want to explain something to you. You look at this map over here, you can see the population density where most people in Yemen live. They live in the Houthi-controlled areas over here, okay? Th this area is, is, I mean, it's empty. <laughs> it's the, it's nothing there. And um, this is about 80% of the population living under Houthi control, okay? Now, again, the, the uh, Houthis are fighting the Yemeni government, and the Yemeni government is backed by a coalition uh, which includes uh, such humanitarian actors like Saudi Arabia <laughs> and the United States. And, you know, they've been bombing the shit out of Yemen for the last uh, couple of years and committing what is essentially genocide. I mean... Uh, it's already beyond belief, the situation there. The world, um, the, the UN, I mean, they've called this what it is, the world's worst humanitarian crisis. That is really what's going on here. 20 million people in Yemen are suffering from hunger and malnutrition. Two-thirds of all Yemenis are hungry. Two-thirds. Think about that. And now the issue is, I mean, they're asking for donations. Um, I've, I've shared this before, uh, 
they have like a, a cool app where you can um, donate. There it is. Share the meal. And the, the thing is now, the, the question is, can you donate? Because if they've designated the Houthis as, um, well, I think for the UN, it's fine. I think it's okay because it's a world food program, right? So it's, it's under the umbrella of the UN. So I, I don't know if they're still going to be able to, to um, get stuff in. I, I'm imagining yes, but uh, the problem is most of the uh, food, uh, everything in Yemen is imported. Do you understand the issue now? It's imported. And on top of it, they're in a war. So, I mean, what happens, what, end up happening, what ends up happening here is that people become afraid to deal with the uh, Houthi government, right? That's, that's how they screw the country. So you'll have people in the uh, uh, financial sector, they'll be like, no, we, we want nothing to do with you because if, if, we, if we engage with you, the United States will punish us. They will fine us. They will freeze our assets. And uh, we're screwed, right? So even, co even companies or uh, traders that are engaged in, in harmless things like food, right? Or medical supplies, they, they will stay away from that because they don't want to deal with the complications of having to go through the OFAC or having to uh, navigate around U.S. sanctions. It dissuades people. It drives people away. That's the whole point. I mean, if, if I know this, they know this. They're not stupid. They have people whose job it is to come in at nine in the morning and sit down and calculate how many people are going to die from the sanctions and, and what the impact is going to be on the financial sector, on the military. They, they've studied this. They're not stupid. So you have people in the financial sector who make it harder for them to obtain dollars, right? You, it's not like you can just go and uh, buy dollars like that. Sometimes uh, you, have to, uh, you have to sell the local currency, um, whether, you know... You're in Syria or, well, Syria is uh, different because you have a lot of uh, billions trapped in Lebanese banks. And that's also, that, that's a whole other story. But the, the point here with sanctions is that it makes it harder to obtain foreign currency, right? That's, that's number one. And if you can't deal with dollars and half of the transactions uh, that are happening in the world are done in dollars, that cuts you off. That cuts you off from a lot of things. Second thing, as I, as I mentioned before, uh, you have the trade and commerce that is cut off because companies are just like, I don't want to deal with you. E even if you got dollars, I don't want to deal with you because I might get punished. I might get fined. I might get put on a list. I don't want to deal with you. That's what happens. And that's, that's the case with Syria. That's the case with Iran. And it, like I said, it ends up affecting things that are essential goods, like, uh, you know, uh, repair parts for medical um, uh, appliances or, you know, uh, dialysis machines, um, hospital uh, equipment that you can't, Produce locally things that are made in Germany, for example, or in another country. It's harder to get those parts. You, you're cut off from dollars, and you're cut off from uh, companies. They don't want to deal with you anymore. And it's not just medical; it's in every domain. I mean, it, it, this affects all infrastructure, uh, all all uh, domains of public infrastructure. And like I said, when you have a country that's in war and imports most of its uh, food, I mean, this is just horrendous. And it's already they're already in a famine. They're already uh, uh, undergoing a cholera outbreak. I mean, this, this is sadistic, is what it is. So you have this piece of shit Pompeo coming in at the last minute and, and doing this. I mean, this is just disgusting. So like I said, the designation will take effect on January 19th, one day before President-elect Joe Biden takes office. And, um, well, I'm zooming in for you so you can read that. There we go. In addition to the Houthi designation, Pompeo in coming days is also expected to likely redesignate Cuba as a state sponsor of terrorism. Both moves will impose or reimpose sanctions on the targets and may complicate the incoming Biden administration's diplomacy. We all know why they're doing this, of course, right? Let me just remind you quickly. America dropped 26,000 bombs in 2016. Not just in Yemen. A lot of them in Yemen. You know, drones striking a wedding... Uh, killing American citizens. And of course, Trump continues that, right? Trump may have bombed Yemen more than all previous U.S. presidents combined. This is from October 2020. This is a recent one. But look at the, the arms deals. When Trump sold them about $300 billion in arms deals, I think it was like 40, I think it was about 42, 46, something around that. 40 plus different arms deals totaling um, about $300 billion. And, and before that, Obama also sells them about $100, 115000000000 billion uh, worth of arms deals. Because remember, th these are not like in one go. It's over a, a period of a couple of years. So both administrations have sold them weapons, have helped them bomb uh, Yemen. 
have uh, aided them in this this coalition, right? Uh, in bombing fishing villages, in just, I mean, drone striking the shit out of any, uh, anyone, uh, any able-bodied man is a terrorist, according to the Obama drone strike program, according to their legal framework, right? And he uses, again, I was telling you I'd get to this before, how did Obama do that? Well, he used, of course, the um, AUMF, the Authorization for uh, for Military Force, that was signed in 2001 and 2003, right? For Bush to attack Afghanistan and Iraq. He did that within that framework. So you see how dangerous this shit is. And Joe Biden, of course, helped, helped him get that. Joe Biden was going to be president today. So you have a, con a consistent policy between administrations of helping Saudi Arabia, right? To butcher the Yemeni people. And now they're, they're topping it off the, the, the cherry on top, more sanctions. You know, like, oh, it's not the biggest famine in the world already. It's not like we've been bombing them and drone striking them for years. No, no, here, let's put some sanctions. Let's make sure they can't import any more fucking food, even though they're already under famine. This is insanity. This is sadistic. This is sadism. And again, Donald Trump at the last minute, he's trying to get more fucking weapons sold to these, these, these lunatics. These nut jobs in, in uh, Riyadh. This is from 24th of December, just, just a few weeks ago. Last month. So they're doing this on, on, at the behest of Saudi Arabia, right? They're, they're doing this at their behest because the, the claim here is that, oh, well, the, the Houthi rebels, they're backed by Iran, right? That's the claim. And that therefore, because Saudi Arabia has a vested interest in, in uh, uh, fighting them, and of course, the United States has always backed Saudi Arabia no matter what, because, uh, well, there are various reasons I'll get into in a second, but th this is why. So, so it's, not, it's not just a thing of United States foreign policy. It's also a question of backing Saudi Arabia. And of course, you remember Trump vetoed the um, uh, bipartisan, I think Bernie Sanders uh, was a co-author on it to stop the support for the war in Yemen. But again, it's like one of those things where you look at it, it's like, like how long did it take you assholes to wake up? Like, where was this years ago? <laughs> you know, it, it's like... It's like someone, I don't know, it's like shooting someone uh, and, and plugging them full of holes and then you're like, oh, here's a plaster. Oh, oh, actually, we can't give it to you. Never mind. What the fuck? They should have impeached him over that. You saw how he vetoed the NDAA, the defense budget, literally just last month? And they reconvened your Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell. They were like, oh, we got to get back here after Christmas. This is urgent. Can't leave our, our friends over at the military industrial complex waiting. Oh, no. Fuck your stimulus checks in healthcare. No, 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 no. When the CEO and the board members at Raytheon call us up, we pick up the phone. Right? So they reconvene for that because of how urgent it is. But when, when Trump vetoes the uh, war powers, uh, when they tried to limit his, his um, thing on Iran when he, after Soleimani, or when he, he vetoed their resolution to stop U.S. support for the bombing in Yemen, it just, it's like, yeah, whatever. Never mind. <laughs> You know, any, any efforts for peace? Fuck that. But when it comes to war, no, we, we will make sure that shit gets through, even if Trump vetoes it. Amazing, right? It's, it's so interesting to observe how this bipartisanship always fucking manages to function when it comes to corporate bailouts, when it comes to war. Always. But when it comes to peace, when it comes to stopping uh, the militarization of, of murderous regimes like in Saudi Arabia, oh no, we can't do that. Can't do that. When it comes to getting you checks, right? When, when it comes to helping the working class, can't do that. Sorry. There's always an excuse, m millions of excuses, actually. But when it comes to the defense budget, that shit is getting passed, motherfucker. Oh, it's going through. And so, of course, of course, Saudi Arabia, the, I mean, I don't know if you've been living under a rock. I'm sure most of you know this. <laughs> Saudi Arabia is... To you, again, to quote Pompeo, ironically, is truly the, the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism. That's if you're not going not gonna to put the U.S. at number one. But you, you saw Pompeo recently using this phrase, Iran is the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism. Really? Are you sure about that? It, it, Iran was responsible for 9-11? Really? Iran was responsible for all those embassy bombings? Iran is exporting Wahhabism? Really? 
Or is it Saudi Arabia? Oh, we can't say anything about them because they help you in your endeavors, right? When it comes to regime change, they help you in uh, under, under uh, uh, pinning the dollar, right? They, they've helped you. They've been a close ally and not just an ally to you, but an ally to Israel. We, we've heard that very soon you're going to have normalization of ties between Saudi Arabia and Israel. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. And of course, you see this over here. This is another example where uh, people are suffering. And, and this is from September, a few months ago, 2020. The United Nations said on Wednesday that critical aid was cut at 300 health centers across war-ravaged Yemen because of a lack of funding, with a life-saving food distribution also reduced. Between April and August, more than one-third of the UN's important humanitarian programs in Yemen were reduced, uh, was reduced or shut down entirely. The UN said warning of further drastic cuts in coming weeks unless additional funding is received. This is before the sanctions. This is before. This is how dire the situation is. Lisa Grande, the UN's humanitarian coordinator for Yemen, said only one billion of the 3.2 billion necessary had been received. So I actually looked into that and what happened is you had all these countries come together and, and pledge money that they would donate money uh, for the, the UN's relief programs, right? And about, about half of them just didn't deliver. There's no money. They just didn't send it. Ironically, ironically, Saudi Arabia pledged money. The United States, if you look at this, this uh, declaration of... of uh, of sanctions, which is more like a declaration of, of terror, honestly. Um, you can see here that Pompeo is bragging. The United States was the largest humanitarian donor to Yemen in 2020, providing 630 million in fiscal year 2020 humanitarian assistance to alleviate the suffering of the Yemeni people. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a joke. I mean, th this is like, again, it's like shooting someone, you know, uh, filling them full of holes, and then you're like, oh, here's a plaster. No, why don't you just not bomb them in the first place and not support Saudi Arabia? Then they don't need your fucking aid. <laughs> what is that? This, this is absurd. This is how the United States, they play games, right? I mean, if it's not to, to, to blackmail countries and catch them by the balls, you know, for example, I say this with Egypt, for example. Unfortunately, they're very dependent on the U.S. A lot of, uh, a lot of um, uh, you know, the, the U.S. gives them, I think they're the number one recipient of U.S. aid. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And so, you know, their food supply depends a lot on the U.S. Right? They got them by the balls. So you play nice with Israel. You don't fuck around with it too much. You do what we say. You do what we say and we keep giving you aid. Or, or if it's not for that, and of course you have the IMF and the World Bank doing their own shit, right? Development. They, they do this stuff, right? Oh, they'll, give, they'll throw a few crumbs after bombing the shit out of, out of a country, right? They do this with everyone. They'll, they'll say the same thing about Syria. Exact same thing. Oh, look, uh, the U.S. has been leading the fight against ISIS. You created ISIS, you motherfucker. <laughs> you created, like, all these 50 offshoots and helped create them and participated in this. And, and then the, the same thing with the sanctions. I, I told you, you can go read the Caesar sanctions. Oh, look, we know that there are concerns about humanitarian things, and we know a lot of people are going to starve to death, but, you know, look, we, we gave a few crumbs here and there. Look, we're so generous. Right? It's, it's like some, some, some tyrant king. Uh, in, 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 my, <laughs> in, in my grace, in my infinite wisdom, as Trump says, I've decided to bestow upon the peasants a few crumbs. That, that's what they sound like, these lunatics, these murderers. And uh, just, to, just to remind you also, you have uh, Germany, for example, that, that also went and designated... Hezbollah as a terrorist group a while back um, and they only did this because of the United States I mean Hezbollah has like no connection to Germany zero connection and of course you have a parliamentary or political wing you have members of Hezbollah that are in the government right they're ministers members of parliament etc in Lebanon and you have the the paramilitary wing right and so they didn't care the U.S. came to Germany. It was like, no, 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 no. You, you declare all of it terrorists. So 
this is, again, another way that they strong-arm their own allies, right? This is uh, from Politico. When is this from? Also, yeah, it's just about, uh, just under a year ago when they did this, right? I think, I'm, I, think I reported on it. Um, I think I remember doing a video on this, yeah. And so they tried this with Germany, and they tried a lot of other European countries to do it too, right? But it, it's not succeeding uh, as, as they want. But nonetheless, it's just another display of how they, they arbitrarily use this tool uh, of um, labeling people as terrorists when, when they're really exporting terrorism and, and suffering. And uh, they even strong arm their allies to participate in this nonsense, right? And at the same time, they let Saudi Arabia get off scot-free. I mean, this is, this is insane. This is insane. I mean... It's, it's really important to underline the absurdity of it all. Because, again, I think not just Pompeo, but the media, uh, you saw this on Fox, uh, making the same claims. And it's, a, it's very reminiscent of the weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction. You the same thing, like a new, they have a new slogan. Iran is the largest, Iran is the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism. Iran is the largest state sponsor of terrorism. Iran is the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism. And just repeat it, like brainwash people. Literal brainwashing. I'm not joking. I, I, I cut it. It was the same segment. I think I've shown it to you. It was on Fox News. Yeah. Uh, Pompeo and some other chick from the, from the uh, Trump admin. And then the, the anchor himself repeating it. Why is Iran the, the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism? Well, Chuck, the, Iran is the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism because, you know, my, my friends at the CIA told me to say that. What, why did they do anything about Saudi Arabia? Did the Bush administration do anything about Saudi Arabia? The majority of hijackers were from Saudi Arabia, right? Bin Laden comes from a rich Saudi family. A lot of the funding for Al-Qaeda from Saudi Arabia. Never, not a thing. What, what about all the, the other Wahhabist offshoots that, that they've exported and financed in Syria, in Iraq, I mean, all, all over the place, in Pakistan, right? But of course, the CIA had their hand in that as well, so they can't really divulge that, you know, right? <laughs> They're in bed with Saudi Arabia. That's what it's about. This is disgusting. This is really disgusting. They're just making money off a war. They're just deflecting all of the things that they are guilty of onto others and then portraying themselves as benevolent humanitarians.